evening to you and thank you so much for sticking to y254 tv my name is Cheryl blessing and you are watching the power talk show now we've been having very impactful conversations this year and we've just started a new month it's the first Thursday of September and we're winding up the year we're getting towards the close of 2024 but one thing that's been very prominent on our minds is women <laughs> women across all sectors but today I want us to focus on women as leaders women in leadership positions so I want us to have a discussion and figure out what we think about the future. Do we think we'll see more women taking up spaces of leadership? Do we think we'll see more women in politics and uh, uh, accessing uh, these this positions that were predominantly male, uh, maybe they were just assumed to be male dominated. But now we're seeing a shift. I want us to talk about what we think about the future. And joining me is Wendy Aura, who is a, a women's leader. Yeah. yeah, Karibu sana, how are you Thank doing? You so much, um, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's yeah. such a pleasure to host you here today. You. We're going to be joined by another prominent, prominent mm -hmm. lady, a wonderful woman, uh, a woman who is a spectacular leader, and she is uh, uh, heading some, <coughs> some different positions, so you have to stay tuned for you to catch that. But now I want us to focus on this conversation and, and see, do we think uh, women do better in leadership positions than men? Do they perform better? Do they deliver more than men? Because we've been seeing more female presidents recently. We've been seeing more female CEOs and even managers across the board. We've been seeing women taking up space in uh, positions of power. And we want to see, do we think the future is female? Do we think it's going to be something that will change the trajectory of even the Kenyan political field. Because we've seen our neighboring country have a woman as a president. Do we think we'll see a Kenyan woman lead the country soon, in the next few years? So that is the conversation I want us to have today. You can go on our platforms at Y254 and share some opinions with us. Share your experience and what you think about this conversation. Do you think women make better leaders than men? That is the question we want to know. Are there differences in how women and men lead? I want you to highlight that because if you've had an experience of being led by a woman and being led by a man, what are the differences that you saw? What were some of the things that you noted were done differently? by either gender that is the conversation I want you to to have with me on our social media platform so go on uh, our platforms at y254 we've shared a post and you can write your comment your opinion or give an experience of this conversation so I think to kickstart uh, this conversation there's been this talk about a feminist mm -hmm. and people are usually sensitive about the terminology of feminist people yeah. don't always understand it mm -hmm. but what do you think uh, feminism means to you yeah thank you Cheryl um, I think this conversation is very uh, relevant right now because uh, we are having uh, feminism is coming up uh, strongly, but at the same time we are having uh, a counter opposition, uh, f especially for those who don't understand uh, the rationale of this movement. Yeah. So feminism basically is um, is just a way of promoting uh, promoting women in leadership and uh, just to increase spaces and opportunities for women to also uh, be heard, to also uh, amplify their voices on the issues affecting them because yeah. what we know in the historically around the globe uh, women have been marginalized in so many countries uh, and this we look at the statistics we're not just thinking or assuming this but if you look at the statistics uh, in across all sectors there's a time in 1990s when women could not work or if yeah. you work uh, they were paid less or not paid at all but um, uh, the same, the, the, the movement started in around 1995 when now uh, women marched to the streets and they demanded that they also wanted equal chances and opportunities. So that is the, the rationale behind feminism. But uh, it's, it's so unfortunate that uh, people have had different illusion around it, uh, thinking about, it's about women uh, overpowering men or women trashing down men. Yeah. So we have different ideologies, but it depends on how you look at it, but it, it cannot and never change the original 
uh, idea of feminism. Mm, I really love that. Yeah. It's about amplifying the voice of the female audience. It's yeah. because, you know, women, if, if I'm to be represented by a man, he wouldn't fully understand my personal experience because he does not understand what I go through. Mm -hmm. But if a woman was in a position to represent me, then she understands some of the experiences that I have mm -hmm. and she would be in a better position to represent me. Mm -hmm. So it's about representation in, in a way that our voices are heard, the female voices are heard yeah. and respected. Yeah. And I love that you've brought about uh, the, it's not men versus women. It's not yeah. women saying we don't want men. We don't, we want to do away with the male gender. Yeah. It's just women saying I want to be respected equally True. as my male counterpart because I am qualified the same way. Yeah. And how do you think, we've, we've seen uh, since the early 2000s, there's mm -hmm. been uh, an empowerment of the girl child. Mm -hmm. The girl child has really been empowered. There's been focus on that. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed a difference in uh, maybe prior in the 90s versus mm -hmm. now? Do you think there is a change in how the, the female mm -hmm. gender is yeah, treated? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there has been significant progress, I must say. If you look at... Um, the long ago, like 1990s, and then you come to 2000, early 2000, and right now we're in 2024. Um, because of this feminist movement and because of uh, uh, women getting out there and fighting for their, uh, their rights, uh, we've seen uh, now NGOs and spaces coming up to, to address the challenges that girls and women face in the society. And this is not just in leadership. If, if you look at um, uh, if you look at the education sector, for example, we've seen nowadays we have many girls going to high schools, many girls going to universities. And uh, before that, it was we, even when we, we used to get the news on the television, you could only see boys on the top 10, top 20, and we thought maybe academics were left for the boys. But over time, now we see girls getting more confident in themselves and we see them topping up in uh, international exams. Uh, in terms of policies, we've had a lot of, uh, quite a number of policies coming up to also challenge the status quo. Uh, if you look at the challenges of uh, the sh social issues around teenage pregnancies, early marriages, FGM, there are a lot of them, uh, child trafficking. Yeah. So you find that when the girls and women are the main victims of such, uh, such uh, adversities, uh, then the policy makers, which have now come up strongly to introduce policies to safeguard their rights. Because women's rights are human rights. It, yeah. there's no, when it comes to human rights, there's no men's right and women's rights. All humans are equal when it comes to rights. So for, for instance, uh, I know we have the reentry policy, which allows, even after giving birth, you have a chance in life to go back to school. Yeah. Uh, we have, right now we are working on the care. There's a care policy. We are uh, being able to also define care as uh, to put value on care because as much as you are in the house and uh, you, you are seem to be doing nothing, but that is work because it takes uh, it is somebody's job. Some people uh, actually have uh, get their salary wages from looking at our kids. The yeah. women have to go back to work after three months of uh, maternal, uh, maternity leave, you see. So there are all these issues around uh, water, how to get water, policies around water, policies around good health, sexual productive health, all these, they're aligning to, they relate so in the social economic life of a girl or, or a woman. Yeah. And you find that there has been progress. When you look at um, a, a while ago, uh, some time back, uh, if you look at the number of women we had in positions, in leadership positions, uh, when we got independence, we were actually at zero. Yeah, zero women in parliament. So you can imagine it was a house of suits, yeah? yeah. A house of dark suits, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but right now, we have been progressing well. Right yeah. now, we have seven governors in the history. Yeah. Uh, for the first time, we're having seven female governors. Uh, for the first time, we're having 30 f 31 females in the Senate, you see? And then just recently, we had, um, there was an article by Standard, um, something about w w Kenya, uh, standing out even in the corporate uh, in terms of um, uh, the central bank of Kenya we are having many women rise as CEOs yeah. in the, in the, and that is now the economic the corporate part if you look at um, 
the law, the, uh, the legal sector. Right now we have a female uh, chief justice, we have a female president of the Law Society of Kenya, yeah. we have a female, the first president who, like, we are seeing women breaking barriers. And yeah. this is a good thing for us because it gives hope to those young women who are coming behind. Yeah? Yeah. There's a lot of hope that uh, it can be done. And uh, if we get goodwill from the society and from political environment, then I'm very sure that the progress will increase. Yeah. yeah. I really love that you've highlighted very important things. And there really has been so many significant changes yeah, yeah. in uh, every single sector, from mm -hmm. the health sector to the education sector to even mm -hmm. the legal sector. Yeah. All these fronts have women <coughs> taking up space mm -hmm. and powerful spaces, not just taking up spaces in the, what was traditionally defined as women, yeah. as the roles of women. Mm. Now, as you've mentioned, we have governors who are in place, who are female governors who are in place. We have mm. females who are occupying the legal spaces in mm. the legislature. Mm. And I think it cuts across even to the co corporate world because more yeah. women are being uh, employed as mm. CEOs, uh, mm. COOs, mm. all these positions that were predominantly uh, assumed to be male. Mm. And on that note, mm, there was a launch of the G7 governors. Yeah. Mm to promote more women because there's still mm. th we, we don't have the we've not achieved the two-thirds gender balance yeah. in uh, parliament we've mm. done really well there's a lot of progress mm. but it's yet to be achieved since mm. the the constitution was launched in 2010 yeah. and this is 14 years down the line they've mm. launched uh, the g7 i think it was launched earlier this year yeah. and there's a mm. push to expand it to mm. I, I i don't know if it's g14 or g18 yeah, yeah. there's a push to expand it to mm. include more women Women in these spaces yeah. do you think it's something that can be done do you think mm. uh, we can see it in the near future or mm. is it going to take another 14 years for us to achieve mm. the small achievements yeah so as much as uh, the two-third gender rule flopped in Parliament a number of times uh, I think we are now trying to to explore the avenues for example the G sum the G7 I know they recently put up they have a, a council uh, uh, a council that is now overseeing the secretariat and uh, just recently when they met they were outlining the strategies they're going to use to have uh, more more leaders across different counties and uh, there's an approach of w one of the strategies I know they uh, they outlined was he for she movement having more women no more women more men champions uh, joining the movement so that uh, we have support from both fronts yeah. and also there's uh, aspect of mentorship so that uh, in every from grassroots level because now these are the G7 they're just a starting point there are seven governors from different counties so we are looking at how we can increase the now to G14, 18 that you're talking about, but starting at the grassroots and giving opportunities for mentorship and exposure from grassroots level to across the county. Yeah. So I think uh, if this is one strategy that can help us achieve uh, increased inclusion if the two-thirds gender uh, rule won't work. And you see this rule when it came, it was because of the few elective post uh, positions that women took up yeah. but now when we have increased mentorship and support then we have more women vying and then when we ch we change the status quo about the uh, change the cultural beliefs and change the narrative about women leadership then that way we have now people uh, people adopting uh, people tr coming in and supporting the, the women leadership. So I think yeah. we have many strategies that are set in place. And even at organizational level, I'll, I'll, I'll mention what we do as uh, Young Women Leaders Connect. Uh, we are also intentional about the mentorship aspect, especially for young women in politics. And when yeah. we start now, we are, nurturing, we are grooming the next aspirants so that by the time they come up for the uh, and why then they're ready for the people yeah. because now people uh, we have some communities that maybe feel that uh, women are not leaders enough but yeah. now when we equip them well and in good time then they're they're fit for the job at yeah. the right time so mm -hmm. I think we are trying to explore different avenues so that uh, w maybe in, in the future we won't be talking about the two-thirds gender rule as women 
Yeah. Maybe it will be 50-50 now and then maybe with some day it will be the two thirds the men demanding it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just a rule that is there as much as we are on this other side you never know. Uh, yeah. Maybe if we just pull up ourselves as a community then we want to be talking there about There might it. be a shift. Yeah. And, and that's a future that I think we can foresee because even in terms of female presidents, mm -hmm. in the past decade, we've seen so many women taking up spaces. Even our neighboring country yeah. has a female as a president, mm. and she's been doing remarkable jobs. Mm. And in the, in the U.S., which is considered to be a pace mm. setter for yeah. so many countries globally, right? Mm. Now we have a female vying for the position. Mm. Previously, uh, Hillary Clinton tried, and fortunately, mm. she couldn't get the position. Mm. But now... We are aware that it's it's something that can be achieved. Mm. And uh, joining me, I know you've you've seen uh, Brenda coming in. We have Honorable Brenda Muturi, mm. who is the chair lady of uh, the ODM Women's League in Meru County. Karibu sana. Sure. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Nin mm. traffic in Nairobi, ma? <laughs> 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 okay. I was held up in some meeting before. Oh. I came here, yeah. Mm. No, it's okay. As long as you've joined us, we are happy, we are mm. pleased. And we're just having a conversation. We're talking about women taking up space mm. and particularly leadership positions in influential positions. You know, we're not mm. talking about leadership in terms of Chamaya, Nyinyikwa mm. Estate. We're mm. talking about the chief justice position. We're talking about the president position. We're talking about being the CEO of the CBK. Mm. All these powerful, influential positions. So we want to, we want to understand, uh, Brenda, you have been a leader. Yeah. And what do you think about the experience? What, you know, sometimes people say that women do not deliver as well as men. Mm. Or women are assumed to get these positions through other means, mm. not because of your qualifications and your experience. Have you experienced something of, of that nature where people would discredit your intellect and your experience and they assume, no, she probably just got this because Anna mm. Juana Namtu. Mm. Has that been your experience or have you faced something like that? Yeah, uh, what I can say uh, in leadership and governance, uh, basically in politics, there are so many challenges and stereotypes that women face. Um, first and foremost, we can see it's the gender biasness. Um, and in regards to that, I can say that uh, there's the patriarchy sense of uh, maybe so many people thinking that um, the men should rule and the women cannot rule as well, uh, as well as men. Yeah. And uh, also on the other end, um, there's uh, this notion that uh, maybe a woman cannot lead a man. So such stereotypes are, are there in the society, but that needs to be curbed and to get to be gotten rid of. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, I've experienced that. Mm. Yes. And it's something that we need to get rid of because women are, women are questioned mm. on some basis that men are not questioned on. Mm -hmm. And sometimes with the men, mm. it might be. They, they got that position because they're purely a man and they, mm. they share same country similar country club. Yeah. Women have to work harder to achieve some of this this accomplishments and this this positions to just attain it and be there and be visible. Yeah. Whereas the, the males do not experience that as much, mm. particularly in this in the, the corporate field, in the political mm. field, in the leadership field. Mm. And the question that we're asking on our social media platforms is, have you noticed any differences between how men and women lead? Are there any differences that you can tell this is something, this is something that's very significant, that you can tell this is a woman who led this project or this is a man? We want to know what your experience is, so go on our social media platforms and let us know what your opinion is is in this conversation mm. and on that note the 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 country has faced so much mm. from the beginning onset of the year we had the femicide where women were being killed in numbers and that's been continuing the conversation ended or the conversation was it, it went down a bit mm. but the actions have still been there mm. and the women representatives are assumed to not be doing as much Mm -hmm. The women representatives, uh, when, you, when you actually look at it, we haven't felt the impact of the position. We haven't felt what these women are doing to add value to our lives. We haven't felt what they're doing for our gender. Why do we think that is the case? Uh, Wendy, do you have an opinion on that? Uh, first, I would say that um, when it comes to leadership, it looks beyond gender. 
we all have uh, for instance, if an, I'm an MP and you're an MP, a male, sorry, yeah. <laughs> just an example, and we are on the same table, the value that I'm going to bring of uh, just understanding the roles of that particular position, for instance, representation, um, oversight, and all that, uh, when it comes to leadership, it looks beyond gender. So for me, I feel it's not about me being a male or female to make me work. If I'm somebody who can work, whether I'm a woman or a uh, a man, then I can work. And if I'm not, a, uh, I can. If I'm someone who cannot deliver, then I can't. Yeah. Uh, reg uh, regardless of the uh, the gender. And when you look at um, uh, th th those are uh, uh, those are surveys that was done about the the women governance performance, and I was glad to see three women governance in top ten. So yeah. that shows that uh, they're up to the task, and the, we've had some, for example, Honorable Wanga making headlines of uh, doing amazing work in the county. Uh, then others, like you now Waiguru, they've been making headlines. Yeah. So for me, it's it, it's looking beyond the gender. I won't really yeah. judge leadership based on gender, but also let's look at. Uh, uh, now you're talking about the issue of femicide. I know people were raising the issue of women speaking out, but I also want to put myself for a second uh, in their position. You know, when, when you're a leader, there's a lot of protocol for you to change something in the country. It, ha it is protocol that takes process, that needs to engage other stakeholders, that needs lobbying. Uh, it's a process of advocacy. Mm -hmm. And it's not about going to do a press and then the next day we have change about the issue, for example, the femicide issue. Yeah. Um, Maybe the match they would do, apart from maybe calling out the perpetrators, was uh, if there are gaps in the policies and also maybe uh, strengthening the judicial system to follow up on such cases. But in terms of uh, maybe expecting too much from women leaders, when in the Senate or in the, uh, the Parliament, there's actually limited they can do as, a pers as individuals. And that's why we need like more women being in those places so that when they br now have a strong front, then they're able to speak about these issues strongly. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like that you highlighted that. First, you highlighted that it's very individual based. Yeah. It's about the individual's competence. It's mm. not about the position. Because mm. if you're incompetent and you're given mm. the position, then you will not deliver. Yeah. But if you're competent and you have the position, even without the position, mm. you will go above and beyond. Yeah. And another thing you've mentioned is the processes. Mm. There are so many legal processes that sometimes you don't understand. Because mm. going online and saying end femicide is mm. just one step. That's yeah. the first step. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more that needs to be done behind the scene yeah. for this movement to actually have an impact. Mm -hmm. The same way with the feminist movement. When mm -hmm. it started, they probably didn't feel any, any change. Mm -hmm. But right now we are reaping the fruits of mm -hmm. the, femi if the feminist movement. Mm -hmm. So what you, you've talked about having support in terms mm -hmm. of other leaders. Yeah. And you do that by the, the young women's leaders league the mm -hmm. connect yeah brenda i i know you're also part of that mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm a member yeah. of uh, the young women leaders connect mm -hmm. uh, yeah. how does that impact you because mm -hmm. when we talk about education from from your childhood to your teenagehood to you going to university mm -hmm. that's barely enough for mm -hmm. you to be prepared for what's actually out there on the ground mm -hmm. so how has being in that uh in, in fellowship with other women who are leaders and influential in positions that are like very demanding, how has that impacted you as a leader? How has it improved your skills? Uh, okay, I can say uh, in the Young Leaders Women uh, Connect as a member of that um, organization, it has been impactful uh, since uh, the organization tend, uh, tends to nurture young girls who, uh, who, are, who are passionate in leadership and governance. And so basically I find that um, through the right channels and through the right, f uh, the right, the right people in the, in the organization, you can try and acquire, okay, you can acquire much better skills in leadership and governance. And then basically generally there are other mentors like um, my personal mentor, Honorable Mili Odhiambo, who basically uh, has mentored and nurtured me through the journey, the political journey. And, um, 
it has been tough yes there have been ups and downs but um regardless she's held my hand yeah, yeah. Mm. and it's impactful you know having someone to yeah. hold your hand through mm. the journey sometimes is all it takes for you to actually achieve your true potential your full full potential yeah. Yeah. and we really mm. love that so i want us to take a very short break but meanwhile go on our platforms and the question we are asking is have you noticed any differences between men and women's leadership styles? What are some of the differences that you've noticed between these two genders when they lead, when they're in the position to influence change, to impact, change, like make a very strong impact on uh, policies and on uh, things that will, will cause a, a, a long-term change, a long-term effect that will last. What are some of the differences that you've noticed between men and women in leadership positions? Go on our platforms at Y254. We'll take a very short break, but stay tuned. My name is Sherry Blessing, and this is the Power Talk Show.